when you blow into a bottle, it uh, creates a tone because there's a resonant oscillation of the air inside the bottle. And the oscillation is a type called uh, Helmholtz resonance. And what's happening is the air in this section of the bottle, in the neck of the bottle, is oscillating up and down like a mass on a spring. And the spring is the air in the main part of the bottle with the volume, let's call it V. And, um, and we can actually predict the frequency of the oscillation and thus the frequency of the tone that's produced because a mass on a spring oscillates with an angular frequency that's given by this where that's the mass of the oscillating uh, thing which in this case is the the air in the neck and this is the spring constant so if we can find the spring, the effective spring constant of the air in the main part of the bottle we can predict the frequency and to do this we can first assume that this air is expanding and contracting adiabatically. That means that during the expansion and contraction process no thermal energy is getting in or out of the system. It's expanding and contracting too fast to uh, radiate any heat as it contracts and warms up slightly and, um, and so it's expanding and contracting without an exchange of energy with the outside. In, when, a, when a gas expands and contracts adiabatically, this is true. So the pressure inside the bottle uh, at any given moment, if you multiply that by the volume raised to the power of this constant, those two are going to be constant. So in other words, if you, if you multiply those two at any point during the during the cycle of the oscillation, it's always going to be equal to a constant. And gamma, that constant, is about 1.4 for a diatomic gas, which air is mostly diatomic gases. Okay, we can actually use this to find the, uh, the spring constant of the air inside the main part of the bottle. Uh, to do this, let's start by first deriving a, a differential element for this. basically taking the derivative of this. Uh, let me solve this for dp. And I can uh, cancel some things here. Uh, this minus one, let's see, the gamma cancels. I get this. This. Okay, so now um, dV is the change in the volume of this thing from the equilibrium value, and <clears throat> that change is simply uh, how much the movement of this parcel of air has compressed this. So if this moves distance x, and the cross-section of that is A, then the change in volume is XA. So I can plug that into here. Another thing I can do is that DP is the change in pressure from the outside, and it's that DP, when, when it's compressed, DP is positive, in other words, the pressure in here increases. That is the restoring force that wants to push the mass of air in the neck back out. So, as with a spring, uh, we can use that to describe the restoring force. The total force that's, that's tending to push the mass in the air in the neck back out is uh, area times dp. Uh, area times pressure is total force. So, I can solve this for dp and put that here. Now let me take an A over here. And let me just 
just bring this X down here. Now this equation, that equation now has the form of Hooke's Law for a spring, where, where this part right here is the spring constant. So P gamma A squared over V, that's the spring constant of the air in the main part of the bottle. So I can plug that into up here for the K to find the, uh, the constant here. So oops. okay. So there's there's the angular frequency that we're predicting for the uh, oscillation of this mass and um, so we're gonna we're gonna test that against the frequency that's actually of sound that's actually produced the frequency we're gonna be measured is not the angular frequency but the uh, cyclic frequency which is related to the angular frequency through this so here's the frequency that we're gonna that we're gonna be testing So to uh, calculate the predicted frequency for the tone in the bottle, we have to first find all these variables. Um, the pressure uh, is the ambient pressure in the bottle. And I looked up on the Weather Channel website and it said it's about 30.04 inches of mercury right now, which is about 101,700 pascals. And uh, let's see, gamma, the adiabatic index, air is pretty well a diatomic gas. It's mostly oxygen and nitrogen which are diatomic and for a diatomic gas the adiabatic index is seven-fifths which is <clears throat> 1.4. Uh, the area that is the area cross-section area of the neck if I measure the diameter it's almost exactly two centimeters so the radius is one centimeter pi r squared is the area so 0 0.01 meters squared times pi is 3.14 times 10 to the minus 4 square meters. Uh, the volume is the volume of the main part of the bottle that's acting as a spring. And it says on the label here that this is a 1.5 liter bottle, which is 0 0.0015 cubic meters in SI units. And finally the mass, the oscillating mass, the mass of the air in the neck. So if I just take the volume of this multiplied by the density of air, I can find the mass of that. So um, the length of this is about, uh, call it 8 centimeters, 0 0.08 meters times 3.14 times 10 to the minus 4 square meters that's uh, this will be the volume of that air and I found out that this pressure and temperature the density of air is about 1.21 kilograms per cubic meter so let's see 0 0.08 times 3.14 times 10 to the minus 4 uh, times 1.21 so that mass is about 3.04 times 10 to the minus 5 kilograms Okay, so now we have all these numbers. Let's calculate the frequency. So, uh, 101,700, uh, 1 1.4, 3.14 times 10 to the minus 4. That gets squared. Uh, let's see, volume 0 0.0015 and 3.04 times 10 to the minus 5. What does that give us? So 101,700 times 1.4 times 
3.14 on the center line is 4 squared divided by 0 0.0015 divided by 3.04 times 10 to the minus 5. Take the square root of that. divide by 2 pi. And the frequency I get is 83.5 hertz. So that's the uh, frequency I'm predicting for this bottle. Okay, so I have um, Data Studio set up, and this is um, a fast Fourier transform of the signal coming from a microphone. So if I speak into the microphone, uh, it makes a spectrum of the sound. Uh, this spike right here is some sort of noise, I don't know what it is, but I'm just going to blow the, um, the bottle tone into there. Okay, there I've frozen it, and I can use the little smart tool to find this frequency. And it's about 85 hertz, which uh, the prediction was 83.5 or something like that. So uh, comes pretty close to the prediction.